This time we're in Banias, a first century BC ancient city which also goes by the more familiar name to you, Caesarea Philippi. Mentioned in Matthew 16, it's where Jesus asks his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? Located at the base of Mount Hermon, the very north of Israel, this place has so much history that it would take 10 episodes to cover everything. I don't think we're supposed to do that. So consider this an appetizer of this marvelous historical site. This place had many names throughout history. It is most famous for its idol temples, built to worship the Pan God, and hence the name of it, Banias, or in Hebrew, Banias. You've probably seen the drawing of this god before. It's that half man, half goat type of a god. So how did they worship him exactly? Human sacrifice. And the story goes like this. They would take the human sacrifice into this cave and throw the person into a natural abyss reaching the underground waters at the back of the cave. If the victims disappeared in the water, this was a sign that the god had accepted the offering. If, however, signs of blood appeared in the nearby springs, the sacrifice had been rejected. If you consider the craziness of this pagan worship and say, I'd say we're living in the far worse time, these few sacrifices are nothing compared to the one and a half billion abortions in the last 35 years alone. We set our course onto a 30-minute trail that goes along the Banias River. The nature didn't look like Israel. It looked more like the Blue Ridge Mountains of Georgia. It was gorgeous. Make turtle soup. No. Eh? And we eat it. It will be a good addition to the chicken. Yeah. of the hike, you get a beautiful waterfall. This time of year it's quite small, but in the spring it's huge. So huge that we would be all wet if we stood this close to it. So um, I've got a trivia. Okay. You ready? Yes. What infamous children's story is based off of the mythology and symbolism of God Pan? Mm, that's a good one. If you said Peter Pan, you've got it. <laughs> it is all over that story. That certainly gives a new look on that story. Yes, it does. So on the other note, this week we had the former rain. Oh. Yeah, and it was so unusually strong. Yeah. Yeah, what was it, like 9 a.m. and it just woke us up? Maybe even a little earlier yeah. than that. Wow, and it, why is it unusual? You'll find out in just a minute. You see, for Israel, rain is a big deal. Because this land does not have sufficient water source for life or agriculture. So the people of Israel always depended on God's blessing to provide the rain during the winter season that will be enough water for the entire year. So let's check Deuteronomy and see what God says. For the land that you are entering to take possession of, it is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come, where you sowed your seed and irrigated it, like a garden of vegetables. But the land you're going over to possess is a land of hills and valleys, which drinks water by the rain from heaven, and a land that the Lord your God cares for. The eyes of the Lord your God are always upon it from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So, how do you describe water drops falling from the sky? Well, what is this? Only one word to describe it, right? Yeah. 
If you're in Israel and know Hebrew, you've got four different words to describe it. What are they? So we have Yorei, Malkosh, Matar, and Geshem. Yes. Yorei is the former rain. It's this type of rain comes a little before the beginning of the rainy season, right about, what do you say? Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, yeah, about this time of the year. So this rain is usually light and it breaks up the ground so we can start to work the fields. And it is the best type of rains because it comes right at, after the dry and hot summer oh, and yes. it just refreshes the land. It is amazing. So it's it such is. a blessing. And it brings this nice fresh breeze after yes. this dry and hot summer, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. So, it's, so it was so wonderful to just wake up and smell this fresh breeze. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's now the second word for rain is malkosh. This is the latter rain. It's usually a very hard one too. In fact, if it came earlier in the season, it wouldn't be able to penetrate the dry ground and it would have caused a flooding. But coming in the end of the rainy season, it is able to penetrate the softer ground and bring forth a second harvest in the spring. Mm -hmm. It's essential for agriculture. So now, what are the two other words for rain? Well, there is the regular word that describes the regular rainy season, matar, and it's mainly used in the Old Testament. This is the main word for the rain. We're not going to dive into that one in particular, but we're going to present you the fourth word and dive into that one. It is the most interesting word of the four, and it's geshem. It also describes a regular rain, but it is a very unique word. It consists out of three letters, and it directly means to fulfill, to realize, or to bring forth. Mm. Now think of that rain that brings forth the fruit of the ground. And keep thinking of that type of rain that brings forth from the word Geshem and what that symbolizes in this verse. Be patient therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. That's an awesome verse. Mm. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to the channel so you can get more of these videos. Yes, and leave a comment below and tell us what you think, please. God bless you. Till next time.